In a significant development in the legal landscape, the Supreme Court on Wednesday enlarged the domain of Enforcement Directorate when it comes to arrest, attachment of properties, search and seizure by the agency. The Apex Court has delivered its verdict on a group of around 250 petitions which sought clarification on certain provisions of the Act that were open to subjective interpretation and discretion. The petitioners included politician Karthi Chidambaram, Anil Deshmukh and former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti among others. By this verdict, the court has put an end to all those ambiguity and subjectivity. In fact, the judgment has given more teeth and ammunition to the ED and has made it more powerful. Today, we take a quick look at the objectives of the PMLA and the major points stated by the top court in the verdict. But before that, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our page. PMLA stands for Prevention of Money Laundering Act. As is evident from the name, this act was meant to prevent white-collar crimes of the nature of money laundering. Illegally obtained money is given the colour of legitimacy by routing it through a maze of shell companies and various other intermediaries. To prevent such instances, the PMLA was passed in 2002 and came into force in 2005. Here are the main points which the Honourable Apex Court has stated while delivering its verdict. Number 1. It is not mandatory for the agency to supply the ECIR, that is, Enforcement Case Information Report, in every case. It would be enough if ED merely discloses grounds at the time of making an arrest. The court rejected the petitioner's challenge that an ECIR is similar to an FIR and the accused is entitled to a copy of it. Number 2. Section 90, which deals with the power to arrest, does not suffer from the vice of arbitrariness Petitioners had argued that unchecked power to arrest the accused without informing them of grounds of arrest or evidence is unconstitutional. Number 3. Charges can also be filed for the acts of money laundering done before the year 2002. The petitioners had argued that laws in the country cannot be invoked retrospectively. But Supreme Court rejected this point and accepted the submission that maybe the crime would have been committed before 2002 but the accused could still be using the illicit money. This becomes a continuing offence, not just a one-off act. Number 4. The statements given to the ED can't be said to violate Article 20 of the Indian Constitution, which provides right against self-incrimination. The court said that the agency's questioning should be construed as inquiry, not investigation. Moreover, ED officials are not the police. So, statements given to them can't be said to be violative of Article 20. Number 5. Section 3 of the PMLA is not limited to projection of property as untainted. The court rejected the petitioner's argument that the offence of money laundering under Section 3 is attracted only if the property is projected as untainted. The court said that Section 3 has wider reach and it captures every activity indirectly or directly related to money laundering and is not merely related to the final act of laundering. The court, however, has left open the question whether the 2019 amendments to PMLA could have been brought through the Finance Act and has left it to be considered by the seven-judge constitutional bench which is already looking into the money bill issue. ED's money laundering raids have gone up 26 times during the last few years but the conviction rates have remained abysmally low. Out of 3,010 money laundering searches in the last 8 years, just 23 accused have been convicted. These were the important points the court made in its verdict. We hope you like this new video. Do like, share and subscribe for more such recent updates. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to One India channel and never miss an update.